Parents who are more likely to break the cycle of abuse are parents that actually acknowledge their childhood wounds from both their parents. Because when you acknowledge your childhood wounds, you get in touch with that inner child, that little person that grew up in an environment that wasn't the best, and you get to empathize with them, which will allow you to empathize with your own children. Because if you don't, then you run the risk of repeating the cycle. Because if you lack empathy for that inner child or that little person that you were when you were growing up, then it's going to be very challenging to have empathy for your own children. This is why a lot of old child rearing practices like created a lot of parents who lacked empathy with their own children because they were taught to forget about their childhood, to not acknowledge it. And a lot of them were treated in a way where like they were mistreated from a very young age, from like two or three infancy, and they don't remember their childhood. Now you may not remember your childhood, but your body remembers in some way. So maybe you don't feel safe around your parents. There's a reason for that. So you want to get in touch and in tune with that. Where is that coming from or where it may be coming from, even if you don't remember? Because usually, unconsciously, we replay the same way our parents treated us if we don't acknowledge the way they treated us. When you don't acknowledge your childhood wounds, you just project your wounds onto your own children. And not only that, your children become triggers. And then when they become triggers of your own wounding, because you haven't acknowledged it, then you end up doing some messed bad shit to them. Other thing I would say too is stop idealizing your parents. They are not perfect, period. And they are not the end all be all of how parenting is. Idealizing means you're putting them on a pedestal. You don't want to question their behaviors. You don't want to acknowledge the things that they may have done to you when you were much younger. Now you could have love for your parents, but you could still acknowledge that you may have not grown up in the best environment because of them. Because how are you going to stop repeating the cycle if you're not aware of what is leading to that? So one of the best ways to become aware of that is what happened in your childhood to you. How were you raised? What are what were the rules uh, exposed to you? What were the belief systems? How were you treated? Were you abused? Were you were you hurt? Were you hit? Were you verbally, emotionally mistreated? So if you don't acknowledge that and you don't grieve that, then you run the risk of repeating the cycle with your own children because they haven't been integrated. They're still there under the surface and they will come out in different behavioral ways or symptoms or triggers when your children start getting at different ages. So for me, you know, I had a daughter. So one of the beliefs that I had was that I'm going to screw her up because I did not have the skills I needed to be a mother to her. Now, number one, one of the first things is just becoming aware like, okay, I am aware that I don't want to do that. Number two, try to understand how you were treated as a child from both parents. And how did it make you feel? Actually have those emotional reactions that you need to have as a child and grieve and acknowledge the pain and put the responsibility on the parent, you know, because they were supposed to take care of you when you were a child. So it's not your fault. Understanding that it's not your fault that you were mistreated. My parent hurt me. This is what they did to me when I was a child. And this is the belief that was created because of the way that they treated me even the lack of certain things will create different beliefs so really acknowledging that and understanding where they're stemming from and coming from but really you want to get in touch with that child that suffered and their pain and acknowledge it and have the emotions and the grief that comes with it because then you free up energy and you have more space to heal another thing that i will say is learn about the nervous system Learn how to regulate your nervous system, okay? So if you don't even remember like some of your childhood stuff, one of the ways to help you with that is just nervous system regulation. Because when you grew up in these types of environments, your nervous system is wired for survival. It is chronically dysregulated. It is chronically in survival mode. You're chronically anxious, etc. And defensive and all those things. When you have a nervous system like this, you tend to get triggered faster. You tend to react faster. There's less room between your behavior and actually doing it to your child. So learning ways to self-regulate and learning about your nervous system. Because at least this will help you understand why you react or why you're reacting a certain way. Especially if you have childhood trauma. Why are you so anxious? Why are you so dysregulated? Why are you so stressed? Why are you so reactive? Why do you get angry? What? Those are all symptoms of a very dysregulated nervous system. And if you grow up with childhood abuse, then that means that your nervous system is wired 
to go into those states faster than somebody who had an optimal upbringing. So essentially what you want to do is you want to learn to balance your nervous system between the survival responses and the responses that make you feel safe, the social engagement system, the pathway of safety. You know, if you are talking about polyvagal theory, we're talking about the ventral vagal state where you feel safe and connected because when you're in the state which needs to get worked out because if you have childhood trauma usually the state doesn't get to worked out because you're in survival mode all your life then you are less likely to project shit onto your kids less likely to get triggered and dysregulated and then react you create more space between the reaction and your behavior so that's another way that could really help especially if you're a parent you gotta learn this So it's a combination of those things, but ideally, like, you know, you want to acknowledge what happened in your childhood, because if you don't, then you're more likely to repeat it and have empathy and compassion for the pain of that child and what you experience and put the responsibility on the right person, which was your parents. They were supposed to treat you well. And if they didn't, then it wasn't your fault. Have the pain, have the grief. And then free up that space to really focus on healing and learning new skills and creating a connection with your children as opposed to just projecting, projecting.